I so wanted this idea of what I thought my life should be. I was so attached to it. When I was guided otherwise, I felt disappointed. I felt depressed. I felt kind of mad, you know, at life. I'm like, but I so want this, and yet it's so clear my guidance is taking me in a different direction. Look, sometimes not getting what you want is a blessing. You know, looking back in wisdom, you know, over a decade later, I, I really realized that had I gotten what I thought I wanted at that time, I probably wasn't ready. There was a mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual development that I had to go through to live life, to experience life, so that I could truly fulfill my true purpose in this lifetime. There's maybe a few reasons that people don't manifest their desires. Number one, uh, the dream or the vision that you want is actually not truly the authentic dream or vision that your soul is really seeking to express. It's kind of what you think you want, it's what your ego thinks you want, but it may not be truly what you're here to do. The dream or vision not happening is sometimes just a course correction of the universe saying, it's just feedback saying, mm, it's not happening, not happening, not happening. Dig deeper, come into deeper integrity to feel what your real goal is, what your real truth is, connect to that so that you can then create and manifest based on that. Sometimes there's timing. Sometimes the timing isn't quite right. Sometimes there's still certain lessons that you need to learn. I think sometimes when doors don't open up, when the dream or vision doesn't happen, it doesn't mean it won't happen. It just means there's still certain lessons that you need to learn where you're at, in the relationship you're at, and in the job that you're at, that you still need to grow and develop through so that you can unlock the key to the next level. And I think when we learn those lessons, we become the person who is capable of fulfilling that vision, who is ready to fulfill that vision, and then we can you know, go to that next level. Living surrender, you know, a poetic life, living open, is giving everything you have to the moment fully. 100% commitment and doing everything in your control, in your human control, everything in your power, you know, doing the work, doing the study, but making sure you've done everything that's in your power, but also not attaching to the end outcome. When we attach to the end outcome, we limit the result. For me, a poetic life is living 100% committed, but also open to maybe there's also something bigger than we can imagine for ourselves. Maybe there's something more than we can imagine. And that many times we're not always able based on the current state of our own, you know, identification, when we're living inside of an egoic sense of self, we're not able to see the totality of what's available for us. We're looking through a certain lens, a certain limited reality. So sometimes what we think we want is only what we think we want based on who we think we are. But if who we think we are is actually limited, then what we think we want and the goals that we set will also be a little limited. remain open to the magic. And I look at someone like Mandela. This is a guy who wanted to make a difference, who wanted to have an impact, probably had an idea for his life, but I'm sure that if he tried to control his life and make it what he thought it should be, I guarantee you, it wouldn't have been what it ended up being. His life ended up, I, I'm sure, bigger than anything he could have imagined and created with his willpower. 
I don't think he wanted to go to prison for 26, 27 years. I don't think that was in his strategy board. I don't think that was in, on his vision board. I don't think that was on his 10 step goal list. Yes, go to prison, become president, become president of South Africa. I don't think that was in his plan. And so sometimes life, I think, has a, a bigger plan, a bigger intelligence that we get to cooperate with. And I think to do that, we have to do our part. We have to step up, we have to do the work, we have to do the exercise, we have to strategize, but don't limit what's possible. Stay open to what I call the highest good. And we don't always know what the highest good is. Would it have been right for Mandela to not go to prison? To not go to jail? Should we have forced that outcome to not happen? I'm pretty sure if that didn't happen, he wouldn't be the Mandela we know and he wouldn't have had the impact he had. Give everything, but also be open at the same time. We can't be so attached to how we think life should be based on our limited concept of ourselves. Sometimes when you find your purpose, your challenges begin. Life begins to throw these challenges and tests, not because we're doing something wrong, and I see a lot of people give up along their journey because they feel like, oh, maybe I'm doing something wrong. But I believe that when life throws these tests at you, I actually feel it's, it's like life's way of rewarding you. It's life believing in you because it, it, it knows, okay, you're on this path, so you must be ready. And so to me, the challenges and the hardships and the ups and the downs and the divorce and the breakups and the difficulties are just life's way of preparing your soul life's way of preparing your mind and your body and sculpting you with the weight of these difficult times to develop the resilience and the fortitude so that you can be the person who is capable when your opportunity comes, when that moment comes to fulfill the dream and the vision that we have. Somehow we've all been born at this unique time in history where old systems are collapsing, old ways of doing things, old economics, old politics, old relationships, old systems are collapsing and we're being, I think, forced to go inside, forced to connect with who we, who we truly are. And so I think we've all, you know, we've won the, the lottery ticket to be alive in such a time of change and uh, transformation. And so I feel that if we're born at this time, which anyone listening, you're born at this time, uh, if we're born at this unique time in human history, I feel as though there's a reason we're born.